Okay, I think we've, we're starting to level off a little bit. You guys ready to go? All right, we'll try to keep on schedule. I, I appreciate everyone's time. So hello, class of 2024. Welcome freshmen, students, and parents. We are so excited to have you as part of our Tiger family. Tonight's agenda, we are going to go over, over introductions, talk about what the remote start is going to look like, athletics, technology, and some important contacts for you to have. So I am Maureen Plasky. I'm the Freshman Academy Coordinator here at West. Tonight we also have Mr. Steve Millsaps, the Athletic Director, Ms. Karen Harkin, our Director of Technology, and Dr. Teresa Gibson, our Principal. Um, at this time, I would like to turn it over to Dr. Gibson because I know she would like to say a few words. Dr. Gibson? Good evening. Um, this is our most unusual um, freshman orientation um, that I have had in my 29 years of, of education, but I'd like to start by just welcoming our Joliet West Tigers class of 2024 and families. Uh, as Mrs. Plasky said, I'm Teresa Gibson and I have the honor of being Joliet West principal. West has a proud, rich history that you are now an important part of and we are excited that you are joining our Tiger community. I use the term community intentionally because I think you will find that we are more than a high school. We are a community of students, staff, and families who care about, challenge, and support one another. And right now, that's more important than ever. Obviously, your high school experience is not starting out the way any of us expected. And I understand if that is causing you additional stress, and creating a lot of questions. But I'm confident you will find that all staff are going to do everything they can to make your transition to high school successful. Please make sure that from the very first day you stay connected and engaged. Build relationships with your teachers and your classmates. Ask questions and take advantage of opportunities both in and out of the classroom to be involved. This is a new beginning for each of you, and with that comes tremendous opportunity. If up until now you've done well and had positive experiences in school, it's an opportunity to continue that by working hard and staying focused and committed to being successful. If in the past you hadn't done as well as you would have liked, you have a fresh start. Don't worry about the past, just focus on starting strong and taking advantage of this new opportunity. Parents, we know the important role you play in your child's success, so I appreciate you joining us tonight, and I hope you continue to stay connected and engaged. We look forward to working with you towards our shared goal, that your student receives a first-class education, is fully supported academically and emotionally, has a wonderful overall high school experience, and graduates fully prepared for any post-secondary path they choose. Lastly, I'm confident you will quickly realize we have many outstanding staff who are always ready to support you. And please know that I am one of those people. Students and families, please, please reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns throughout your time at Juliet West. As I mentioned earlier, you are now part of a community that challenges and supports one another. And I look forward to getting to know each of you. Thank you and go Tigers. Thank you very much, Dr. Gibson. We appreciate that. Okay, so moving on, um, we are now going to, let's see, my PowerPoint just froze here, but we're going to um, talk about the start of the school year. So we are going to start this year off remotely and reevaluate every six weeks. This decision was due to a number of positive COVID cases that we had within our region. The safety of our students, staff, and community is our top priority. We understand that this transition to high school might not what you, be what you had in mind, but I can assure you that our staff is going to spend time the first few weeks of school getting to know their students and helping them with the transition to our Joliet West family. We will make sure to provide support to your students as we start remotely. When we do reach that point, when students get to return to the building, we will have a plan in place to acclimate your students to the building. The schedule for the remote school day is going to look at the following. 
Um, I'm going to stop my share very quickly and see if I can reboot this PowerPoint. So that way you can actually see this agenda. So are you able to see the schedule now? No. Is that coming up? And a wonderful thing about technology, of course, is there's always some glitches. So give me one moment here and I'm gonna try this again. Now are we getting to see that? Yes, Mo. Okay, beautiful. So I do apologize for that, but again, sometimes we have to roll with the punches. So this is what the remote school day is going to look like. It is six periods. Um, after period six, the teachers will have um, office hours for students. So that way, if there is a student that needs an additional um, opportunity to meet with the teacher via Zoom, get some additional help, um, they will have the chance to do so. Um, each class period, teachers will be recording attendance. Teachers will go over with students how that process is going to be done. Teachers will be delivering online instruction, whether that be a Zoom or a Google Classroom. As mentioned earlier, teachers will have office hours available to students. Students are expected to participate each period as instructed by their teacher. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Steve Millsaps, our athletic director. How you doing everybody? Um, athletic director, Steve Millsaps. Um, I'm going to have or ask you to maybe, I know this is being recorded, but take a picture of this um, if you can or a snapshot if you're on your phone because there's a lot of good contact information on here. Um, as you're doing that, you know, I'm sitting in a dark field house right here, but there's light coming through. So it's a little of an analogy here on we don't know really where we're at, but there is light through this tunnel that we're going through. So again, I do have on this PowerPoint, we do have our contact information for our office, our website our Twitter, I do encourage all of you guys, uh, families and students to get Twitter. I know for the kids, Twitter might be a little dying. It's not Snapchat, it's not Instagram, but I think it'd be good. You're gonna get a lot of updates that way. And then also I created this for the incoming freshmen. I just moved that over. I do have a Joliet West High School Athletics Remind Group. Just text that number 81010 and that message at J-W-H-S-A-T, and make sure you do put that at symbol, and you'll get information weekly. So big, big very important, I, I send out information. I don't know how athletics is gonna look. We, and, and I know I'm gonna talk about athletics here, but activities we will offer some, in some capacity, but we will continue, I can guarantee you, I, we will communicate information as we get it. So as I just mes uh, mentioned, patience, flexibility. I think those are two key words that we're hearing a lot as athletic directors. I think it's very important that you guys as parents um, really understand the flexibility and patience component. Um, again, we are gonna do stuff as within the guidelines of the governor's office, the IHSA, the local health department, and our district to make sure the students are safe and sound when they are on campus. Um, but we are gonna provide something. It could be virtual, it could be a combination of both. But again, I have twin daughters that are sophomores. They do extracurriculars. We are committed here to try to provide some opportunities for kids. But again, I don't have every sport, everything that we're gonna do, every club at this time. So again, that contact information is very important. If you're on that Remind group, you can just send a text through there and I'll get back to you within 24 hours and, and really help you and put you at ease. And that, that's something that my, my department and, and every department here, we have people here that will serve you and help you and get you through it. If this is your first child through here, um, we understand there's gonna be a lot of questions. And now with the going remote, there's gonna be even more, but we will be here. Uh, this is my 20 something year in the district. Um, so again, I don't have all the answers, but I do live in this community and can kind of help as much as possible. Mo, can you click to that next slide? So this is what I can tell you now what is happening. In fact, we do have some girls cross country girls on campus right now for cross country practice. We are offering the fall sports in a practice capacity right now for cross country, golf, tennis, and girls swimming, girls tennis and girls swimming. So that's as of today, right now, around 6.30 Central Standard Time. Um, we are going to try to put together and get approved starting September 7th, more camps. We are allowed 20 contact days within the IHSA for just like we did this summer when we had uh, over 200 kids on campus. So again, 
very important that first slide to make sure that you have that contact information that you need or, or you know, and go back and make sure, and, and again, you're not bothering me. Hey, did that information come out? I, any questions you have, let me know. I'll try to answer them. A, a good reminder here is, as always, I know as freshmen, you guys get physicals and you have to have physicals. It's knowing that date. They're good for 395 days and um, they have to have a physical and they will need one next year as well. And sometimes we forget as sophomore parents um, that they do need a physical because they don't need one for school. This is what it may look like. The IHSA came out and that's the Illinois High School Sports Association. They came out with models of what those seasons may look like. So maybe if you guys could see this and, and just take a picture and, and kind of just go from there, but starting in November, winter sports, starting in February, we have spring sports. And then we have in summer, we have um, the other, you know, traditional spring moving into the summer. So again, th what they mainly did is taking the fall sports of boys soccer, football, and um, girls volleyball and move them into the spring or February 15th start date. So that's what it could look like. Again, I'm telling a lot of people, I'm looking in two week windows and just trying to go forward and trying to get that good, good, because ultimately we want a safe experience when your son or daughter comes on campus. Can you click on that next slide for me, Ms. Pulaski? Thank you. And, and I, I saved this for the last, but this is something we incorporated years ago. You know, what's Tiger Pride mean? Tiger Pride means toughness Monday, integrity Tuesday, Greatness Wednesday, Energy Thursday, Responsibility Friday. And there's some definitions of what that means. Every coach in every sport, um, every level is required and ex expected to be promoting our Tiger Pride core values. And that's just to, to get us into the elite mindset and championship culture that we have started and brought to this campus um, a few years ago. Um, it's an exciting time. We have the, the, one of the best things I did last spring was I, I went to 50 homes and dropped off over 50 banners to students that are going to play at the next level. Um, we, we have a great opportunity for your son or daughter to thrive and get to the next level, or just to have a great experience if they're not there yet in terms of their athletic ability there. And ultimately, like I said before, I know I'm just talking athletics, but I'm sure there's activity people here. I'm sure there's people interested in other stuff. We are in some capacity going to offer something because we do understand the social and emotional connection that activities and athletics bring to the high school experience. So again, we don't know exactly what everything's gonna look like, but I can tell you we're gonna work hard, we're gonna try, and we're gonna try to give you the best experience that we possibly can. So I do appreciate your time being here. I do appreciate you, you know, you know, being Tigers, it's a great place to be. I promise you, we got great people here. So if there's anything you ever need or you want to contact me, feel free. Um, sign up on that Remind and we can get, you know, any communication or any at ease. Um, make it as, you know, happy and excited to be here as well. So thank you very much and Tiger Pride. Thank you so much, Mr. Millsaps. Um, now I'm going to hand it over to Ms. Karen Harkin, and she is going to talk about all the fun and exciting things related to technology and communication. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name, like Maureen said, is Karen Harkin. I'm going to go over some um, information with you about technology and communications. I'm going to start with some information about our one-to-one -one program. Just so you know, um, our program has been in place for nine years. And this is our, our sixth year using the particular model devices that your students are getting. So rest assured, um, things are gonna go pretty okay with that. We've got a lot of it worked out, not that there might not be difficulties, but um, we will work with you if there are problems. If your student has not already received or if they're not going to receive a computer at tomorrow's event, please call our help desk at 815-727-6860 um, during normal business hours to schedule a curbside pickup date and time, and we'll have that number on a subsequent slide for you. A few of the many benefits of our one-to-one -one technology program has been the ability to support this remote learning um, and, the, and connections um, during this pandemic. I was, I'm going to highlight some of the many technology resources we have in place to support students and families. Um, students can find many resources on, this is a screenshot of our JT Campus Connect. It's got a lot of drop downs and links to different um, resources for our students. Uh, this is the default site that will open up in a browser on your student's provided computing device. You can go to the next one, Mo. Um, Office 365, which was on that list, 
um, is where students can access their Outlook student email and also their OneDrive for file storage. Um, being in the remote situation we find ourselves in at this time, checking email is going to be something that students should be doing on at least a daily basis, starting the afternoon of Tuesday, August 18th. This is when teachers will email students regarding getting started with their classes. Um, this is also the best way to reach out to teachers if you have questions. And if assistance is needed, accessing your JTHS provided email, please call the help desk. And that, that information here is on this slide, all our contact um, information and phone numbers. We are providing and will continue to provide curbside service by appointment until we're back 100% on site. Once any students are on site for instruction, we will also open up our help desk for walk-up services following social distancing guidelines with a, for students with a pass. Now I'm gonna review just some, a few um, helpful tech tips for students. Um, please be sure to practice online safety. Students should not participate in any way in anything that could be harmful to themselves or others. This includes cyberbullying and sharing inappropriate material. And don't share any personal information, including your own. Always save your schoolwork to your Microsoft Office OneDrive. That way it's backed up. And make sure to um, contact the help desk if you notice any red X's on any of your files or folders, because that means that the syncing is not happening correctly. If you are experiencing issues with your computer, one of the first things we're gonna ask you to do is do a full restart because that will fix many problems, as we all know, using technology. Um, we recommend restarting your computer device, computing device at least on a weekly, weekly sorry, basis to help prevent issues. Next slide. So um, we started providing um, hotspots through the Sprint's uh, One Million Project uh, last school year. And um, there's no cost to families, no personally identifiable information is collected. Um, they also comply with the Children's Internet Protection Act, known as CIPA. We processed our first batch of applicants this year, and some of you may have gotten them at the event, device pickup events. Um, we will be processing a second batch soon, at which time we will reach out and let you know what the pickup arrangements are going to be for those. Um, we do have a limited supply of inventory, so if this is something that you need, it is best to complete the required consent form. Highlighted on the screen is the tiny URL to do that. Um, do it as soon as possible. Note that this, it is fine to submit the consent even if you have home connectivity, but find it's not adequate to support your student getting their schoolwork done. For example, you might have connectivity, but multiple individuals in your household are home working on it or learning on it and it's too slow. So please take advantage of this um, program. Also note that we are working on some additional opportunities to provide home connectivity for our families at this time. So we hope to have something later this year. Students will have access to their information through the campus student portal using the single sign on button. And there was a drop down on the campus um, on the previous screen to this site also. Do not, they should not try to log in. They will need to use this site to record their attendance for class through, through the portal on a daily basis for every class. And directions for doing so will be provided soon. And next, um, now this is for the parents. So there's a campus parent portal and similar information's on this site. Um, here you can access your students' schedules, assignments, grades, attendance. You can also um, retrieve their dean, counselor, and teacher emails so that you can reach out to them. Parents and guardians should visit the campus portal frequently so they can monitor their students' progress. And parents should also set up alerts to receive notifications regarding grades and attendance. A series of YouTube videos will be communicated soon with the announcement of the student schedules being made available online through the portals. And you can see a list here of the ones that have already been created. So I'm gonna share with you um, Lisa's contact information. She is your family engagement liaison and she's dedicated to welcoming and helping family, families navigate our schools 
including the campus parent portal, and also provides bilingual services. Please reach out to her. She is happy to assist in any way she can. As far as communications, um, we communicate messages by phone, emails, texts. Um, to receive important timely messages by text, you need to opt in by texting the letter Y to 67587. Uh, please note that these types of messages will also go out in other ways, including phone mails and on the website. Remind 101 is the only other district approved text messaging tool of communication that we use. And it is a blind solution where the phone numbers are private. Another resource that we have is our jths.org website. This great resource has a ton of information. It's updated regularly to help you stay connected and to what is happening throughout our district. So you can start there looking for information if um, that is, you find that helpful resource and you might be referred there for information at times. Lastly, um, teacher communication. So again, students should check at least daily for their email communications from their teachers starting the afternoon of Tuesday, August 18th. And students should use their JTH provided email to communicate with their teachers. Parents and guardians can also communicate with their, with their students' teachers by email. And those emails are available in the campus portal. And that's the end of my um, highlight of our technology and communications for you. Thank you, Ms. Harkin. Um, and again, I know that this was a lot of information. Um, this will be posted on our district website um, soon after the presentation. Um, we just got power back today, so hopefully within um, another day or two, we'll be able to have that up for you. So that way you can reference back. Um, there are questions that are in the chat. Um, so what we're going to do is on our um, district website, we have a frequently asked questions page and there are always, already some questions and answers um, on that page. Um, so what we're going to do after this presentation is look at those questions that have been submitted um, and make sure that we address those questions best we can right now. However, Again, please feel free to reach out to any one of us individually um, afterwards if you still have follow-up questions or if there is um, something more particular you need to address. Um, I have on this page kind of one of the most frequently asked for um, phone numbers. So we have our main office. Uh, some people still need to register. So that would be registration. Again, our technology number, uh, special services. So if your student has an IEP or 504, um, athletics and activities, and again, our family liaison. So please feel free to reach out to any one of us. Thank you so much again for attending this evening. We really appreciate it. We are looking forward to next week. We are so excited to have you here. Go Tigers. Thank you again and take care. Welcome. Um, just if anybody is still here, I just put a link to the frequently asked questions awesome. uh, that are already up. Um, you can find that in the, um, you know, in the chat room. It's the bottom one there. And then, um, yep, then, then we'll, we'll work on these other questions as well. Mm -hmm. And Karen, how long can we leave this up for, for questions? I, I schedule it for an hour and a half. Okay. Um, so we have a lot of time. I see a lot of people are asking questions about their schedules and getting access to the portal. Mm -hmm. And that's, schedules had to be totally um, scrapped and redone um, due to the pandemic. And uh, they're still being worked on and we're hoping that Monday is right now our goal to get that out um, if everything goes well between now and then. And then um, another question was, are we not using home access anymore? Yes, yeah, that's, no, we're not using home access anymore, although it's still available to our students and families to log into if they're currently active um, to get 
like if they want to go on there and look at their transcript information or those kinds of things until we get everything in the new system 100%. We'll leave that up. I'm just kind of reading through everything else now just to <laughs> Piazza's daughter I tried that. signing up <laughs> off the text Terry. There, there were a couple of questions about um, third party devices. You know, your student needs to use a Joliet Township issued device. Um, that way we ensure that we have all the um, software that they will need. Um, so there, uh, there was already a pickup of devices at Joliet West and there's also a pickup tomorrow. It would be, um, you can pick up your device at Joliet Central and if you go on our website, you can sign up there for a time uh, to come and do so. Um, like I said, right now, our target date is to get the information about accessing schedules out on Monday, Monday afternoon. Um, there's another thing, my device is broken. Um, so they should contact Ms. Harkin, the, the help desk. Mm -hmm. So 727 6860 727-6860 to arrange for um, a switching it out. Yeah, someone will walk them through troubleshooting to make sure that's what needs to happen. They might be able to fix it remotely. Um, as far as a fee payment, not allowing them to log in, um, do we have our bookstore open for that? Okay. Yes. So um, that's you, a day because our we had no things power. were down. The internet was our internet was down. So you maybe it's back up now. Or are you trying it now? Um, while we're waiting for that one, there's also, will freshmen receive a school supply list? Um, they do not. We don't have lists. Um, typically what teachers have done is after um, the first day or two of class, they will notify students things that they might need for their class, and they will allow students the appropriate time to get those materials. Um, since we are starting remotely, I think the biggest thing is making sure you do pick up your JT device, um, and that will have your student email um, on the sheet that is in that device as well. Um, so that would be a good starting point. And then again, um, that schedule information will be going out. I also saw a question of when is that first day of school? Um, and it is next Wednesday, which I believe is the 19th. I'm writing um, down the issue of um, not being able to access you pay your fees, but it sends you an email, but the link doesn't work, so we can look into that. Um, and as far as books, same thing, since we are starting remotely, um, the teachers are aware also that, and the great thing about us being one-to-one -one for so long is that teachers are very used to using a lot of online resources. However, if there is a book that a student needs for a particular class, within probably the first three to four weeks-ish, um, we will notify students um, what books they will need and how to go about receiving those textbooks. We will probably do a like drive-through event um, similar because of course we do want to adhere to proper social distancing guidelines and making sure our staff and students and community stay safe. Um, but further communication will be communicated as we go. Again, our district website is a great place. Um, and feel free to reach out to any other contacts um, as well um, for those further questions. But as we know information, um, we are communicating that. Um, we almost don't want to communicate too much ahead of time before we know certain things for sure, um, like the textbooks. Um, so, you know, we're, we're making sure that we get all that um, at, at a pace comfortable for everyone. So I see some more questions about the schedules and portal and everything. So you now parents, when you get the link on Monday to log in and create your account, um, you will create your own login and password. You will use that to log in, not single sign-on. And both the parent 
portal and the student portals um, will allow you to view the schedules. And if you are not able to pick up um, a computing device at our event tomorrow, you can call the help desk. Again, 815-727-6860 and make arrangements for a date and time to come and pick it up curbside. Um, again, there's another question about, are we using our Chromebooks from the middle school? No, you do need to get a device from, the, from Joliet Township. I see and I'm confused um, where to go to school for everyday Google Classroom. So again, it's really important that students check their emails um, next week um, because the teachers will be communicating with the students via the student email what their expectation is for that student. Um, most teachers will be using Google Classroom. However, there might be um, teachers that use a different format. So that communication will be going out. So again, we can't stress uh, the importance of making sure students check their student email account with JT. So each parent can have their own account. Um, it depends. I mean, if you have your um, contact information combined, we're working on making them um, separate so that you can each have an account. But that data came over from our old system. So if you are not an incoming student, but a returning student, um, it might still need to be cleaned up a bit for you each to have your own account. So if you already have an account from the summer, that's the same account that you'll use once the schedules are posted. Um, I saw a few questions about calculators. Um, it honestly depends what math class you're going to be enrolled in. Um, and I know that's in the past been on the school supply list, um, perhaps at the junior highs, um, but the teachers will communicate with you, again, what calculator they hope to use um, for their classes. Um, some of them have been able to do some things on the devices which are helpful, um, but many times a graphing cal calculator is required, but they will let you know um, which model and again give you um, time to get that and sometimes teachers will even provide um, links or ideas to obtain them cheaper if they see a deal on Amazon or something like that. So um, I know we're all anxious and want to be 100% ready but again we ha will have some time the first week or two to get the necessary uh, materials and supplies that you need and teachers are very understanding too. If they're telling you on the second day of school that you need a, a certain graphing calculator, they're not gonna expect you to have it the next day. They'll give you some time to get that. So that will be coming also. I saw a question about sophomores and if their schedule, all schedules haven't been released yet, they're all gonna be released at the same time. There's also a question about activities and homecoming. Um, we are definitely hoping to, to have activities in some format. Um, as far as homecoming, uh, the IHSA right now is recommending football be a, it held in the spring. And if that should happen, then that's when we would be looking to do our, our homecoming events. Teachers will want you to show your face for Zoom classrooms. Um, they want to get to know you. Um, again, every six weeks, we're going to reevaluate to see if we have the opportunity for students to come back into the building. And our teachers really want to build relationships and have that rapport with their students where they get to know you. So if unfortunately you're just a name, they're not going to be able to see who you are and know you um, once they get, once you get to their class. So that is something that they will want. They will want to see. They want to see you. They're excited to have you.
swimming class for boys. We don't offer swimming. We don't have a pool on campus, but we do have swim teams for both boys and girls. Um, Mr. Millsamps, what's the season for boys swim? Boys swim will be in the, uh, well, it'd be in the uh, February-ish time, or November to February time frame. I don't know if they may be talking about how we um, swimmers got out of their last period class to go over to the pool, so I don't know if that's what they're referring to in terms of a class. Um, but maybe maybe they could, uh, Corey, if you just want to give me a, uh, contact me tomorrow, we can do that. Girls volleyball is starts in February. Um, we do have, we are going to try to um, offer some contact days in starting September 7th. So again, um, make sure that we, um, or that you sign up for the Remind and you'll get that information. And then also uh, we can get you in contact with the uh, girls volleyball group, um, group our group Remind so you can get more information. Um, Riley, we do not have rugby at this time, um, nor do I see us getting it right now. Um, as far as bus schedules, um, I'm sure those will be going out um, later since we um, are going to be remote for the first six weeks. Um, I know the teachers and administration, everyone's just focusing on getting off to a good remote start and making sure that students have everything they need. Um, so when that time does come for us to be back in the building, um, then we'll give plenty of heads up as to what that route will be for you. But as of right now, you know, we just want to make sure that you have your device, your login, everything is good to go technology-wise, um, and that information will come a little bit later. I also missed one from uh, Mr. Tate there, um, what's happening with boys ba with basketball. Again, uh, the contact days that we'll try to offer beginning September 7th, um, again, sign up for those reminds and that uh, uh, contact information, and we'll be able to uh, get that to you as we get more information. We do not assign Gmail accounts to freshmen. Um, they are encouraged to use their JT issued email account. That's how teachers will be communicating with their students. As far as an in-person freshman orientation, um, again, that's one of those things that when we're given the go-ahead to come back in person, we will have a plan in place. We understand that for our freshmen, this building is new to them. They're not going to know where they're going. This is going to be like day one of school all over again. Um, so we're going to make sure that, you know, again, we have to adhere by guidelines once we're given the okay to come back. And sometimes those guidelines change, uh, change as far as how many people we can have in the building. So um, we are understanding that, again, this is going to be their first time in the building. They're going to need to explore things. Um, the media center, it, it, the library has totally been refurbished. Um, that will hopefully be done by October. So there's going to be a lot of cool things for them to see. So they're going to be given that time to adjust also. So again, it's one of those things. It's, it's unfortunate they can't see everything that's going on right now, but we hope that they'll be back in here soon. For assistance, if your device is not working right or you don't know how to log into your email, call our help desk. Um, and as far as I see someone's um, been asking several times about using their MacBook. There are, I'm not saying there aren't some things that students can use other devices to access because there's some services are available in the cloud and not necessarily on site. But we do strongly recommend you still get a JTHS device because depending on your classes and what our teachers are using, not, you will not be able to access everything you're gonna need. So I would still recommend you get a JTHS device and you are welcome to use another device to access those things that you find you can. Um, there was a question about um, not being able to log in to, answer, uh, to, to pay fees. Um, Mrs. Shelby is um, in our bookstore and she will help you through that process. You can just email her and I'll put it in here what her email address is and she'll ask for your phone number, set up a time to call you and, um, and kind of walk you through how to get that. And then Karen, there's been some questions about how do I get my child's ID number? Did the ID numbers go out with when kids got their devices? Was that information on there? No. Okay. I had a previous question about school IDs also. Um, 
is that something that will be issued once they are back in the building or was that given during device distribution as well? Yeah, we're gonna wait until we're back in the building. Um, we just don't really have a way to get those to everybody. Yes, teachers will be sending out emails to the students, JTHS provided email accounts. We're asking all teachers to do that at the start of the school year so the teacher, students have one place to go to know where to get started. Ms. Harkin, this came up a few times, but I keep seeing it again. How do parents get their um, access codes to, um, to the well, system? Yeah, They'll get that when we send out the information about accessing the schedules on Monday afternoon, if, if everything goes as planned. Please call the help desk if you don't know how to access your school email account. And again, some of these, you know, again, they're similar questions, which is not a bad thing at all. Um, so we'll make sure that these get added to our frequently asked questions also. So you can refer to that. Um, Dr. Gibson did post the link in this thread, but it is also on the district website. Um, and if you ever need some help or guidance finding that, again, you can always call and ask. Um, and again, we will have this um, session posted after also. So again, you can refer back for any of those numbers or dates or schedules or anything like that also. Um, because again, it was a lot of information and some of it was gone through quickly. Um, so that way you'll have the opportunity to go back and look at that information again. Um, and again, that would be on our district website as well, which is www.jths.org. Um, and again, for this presentation, just give it a little bit of turnaround time before it's up, but it will be there. scheduling questions yeah um if there's a, a problem with your schedule then um you will reach out to the main offices and they will get you to whoever you need needs to be um work on that whether it be we have schedulers and we also have our um other administrative team members that work on those Um, and also keep in mind too that with Zoom, yes, teachers wanna see your face and we do expect there to be appropriate behavior. Um, we do still have deans that um, work in the building and we hope to not um, have to deal with any um, inappropriate Zoom protocol that could be taking place because again, you're in high school now and I'm sure that you're all going to um, you know, be good students. And if you aren't supposed to be doing it in a normal traditional classroom setting, then you probably shouldn't be doing it on Zoom. So um, keep those things in mind. Uh, a question about fees keeps coming up. You will get um, an email pretty soon from our office of um, our communications department, and it'll give more details about where to go for the fees. But again, if you have any problems, if you just email Mrs. Shelby in the bookstore, she'll walk you through that. Okay. okay. And again, um, we don't have school supply lists, but the teachers will communicate with students um, any necessary um, things that they would need for their classes.
and we do expect appropriate clothing and behavior if that's what you're asking. Clubs. Um. And again, the, the clubs um, and activities that are offered um, are still something that we are working on and is a work in progress. Again, as Mr. Millsap said, we are doing our best to make as many opportunities available to our students as possible. Um, so that information is going to be communicated as we get approvals for that and as, as we get the okays um, to have that information. So again, we just ask um, that you be patient. And I know so many of you in the community have been and we really appreciate Appreciate that. Um, but again, that's something that we're still working on, still that work in progress. So as we get that information, we'll make sure to get it out to you because we understand how important it is to be involved in high school and how so many of our students want to in some way, shape, or form. So we're going to do our best to do everything that we can to make that happen for you. Mrs. Pulaski, thank you so much for putting this together. Um, as you said, we'll go through these questions and if anything needs to be added to the frequently um, asked questions, we'll go ahead and do that. And in the meantime, you know, thanks. Thank you everyone so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys. We'll see you next week.